league. <laughs> make, miss. It's a make or miss league, baby. Let's see. Thank you, Kawhi. Miss Terror. Oh, yes. It's that time of year again. Oh, my God. King, uh, cake, uh, no. baby is back. So this is the seasonal mascot for the Pelicans. Is it the most terrifying in sports? This needs to be in a horror movie, without a doubt. This is like the It's Baby something. This Watch is what not, you this say, is he's here. Good. This is not good. It's <laughs> my favorite bobblehead. I'm not kidding. I love this thing. They need to retire. Oh they God. need to retire. This Are you thing. kidding? How would you scare little kids? Which is clearly the goal of a basketball game. If this came to my house on Halloween, I'm not open the door. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. No way. But everyone no likes King Cakes and everyone likes Mardi Gras. And if you don't know the story of the King King baby, Google, because it's good. All right. Make racks. I'm still keeping my friend with me for the rest of the make miss. We got a couple of impressive dunks last night in the college ranks. First year's SDSU. Matt Mitchell on the break. Woo. Okay, okay. The teammates. They've been playing great, right? too. And then Dayton's oh, Obi Toppin a with wow. the windmill. One off the Nick, one are you as fired up as King Cake Baby Goodness. is for the tourney next month? Rach, I want this Rising Stars dunk contest. Yeah. I want to bring this to fruition because these yeah. kids come in the league yeah. and it is awesome what they're able to do. Or this is a good thing. just actually some of the rookies could be in the dunk contest because yeah. it's not like John Morant could not have been in the regular dunk contest if he Man. had wanted to. Right. Or Zion, by the way. They both could have been no, in the dunk contest. No, save your dunk, Zion. I don't want to see Zion in the dunk I contest ever. I want to see ever. Zion in the dunk contest. Ever. Too. So ever. Cake, baby. No. What? <laughs> Miss Jumpers, check out this wild finish from Ben Simmons last night, Paul. Uh, let me look, see this. Look, look, look. I mean, he doesn't even need a jumper if he can do that. Come on. Yeah, he's one of the best in the league around the basket with either hand. He I mean, this is incredible. Of course, with this either hand. Incredible. I caught that, either by hand. the way. Yeah. <laughs> you think he should switch hands? I don't know if he's right or left-handed, truthfully. Well, it's good to be both, right? Yeah, he's very ambidextrous. Yep. When you can do this, yes. why? Why can you not shoot from the outside? Surround him with the proper shooters. I was going to say, if he was surrounded with more shooting and Joel Embiid, you don't have to take Joel Embiid off the team, but just maybe no. stack up more shooting. I don't know but what but Ben Simmons is from. awesome. Right? Why can't he shoot from distance at all? But well, he can. can. Paul and I are talking about this. He's saving it for the playoffs, I'm telling you. I just <laughs> saw him <laughs> sit in a row. I was say, we have seen him during warm-ups. <laughs> Make Debo. This happened the other night, but we had to bring it back. All right, watch Cam Reddish. Man, give me this. Just rip oh, the ball. Man. Evan Fournier. That's called the Debo. Woo! <laughs> Boom. Good music, thank you. And of this course, he remembers Give Giannis. That. Give me that. Right? Zion took it away from him the other night. <laughs> Do the rookies need to chill, or are they just making themselves heard? These rookies is coming in like with an attitude. <laughs> Remember the Colin Sexton crazy eyes? The hey. first part of that sequence makes me cry, though, right? because it's on the magic, and they're wearing those weird orange uniforms. That. I'm just saying, Come so on. yeah, Cam, Zion. This doesn't happen too often, where somebody just... Just give me this a snatch steal. Usually you take the ball like a snatch steal. How, how often does that happen? There you go. Producer Danny, we got it in. Thank you. I like it. I like it. To the Pelicans for my favorite. The baby. Uh, welcome back to the jump. I'm Rachel Nichols alongside Nick Fidel, Paul Pierce, King Cake Baby. Let's talk about the Rackets. Russell Westbrook had himself another gate game with 36 points, 10 rebounds in that win over Boston. Here's Russ on the Rockets' dynamic small ball lineup after the game. Take a listen. Ooh. Well, I think um, allowing uh, the pain in people to five out is tough to guard, especially uh, when I'm attacking and making plays and, and being able to do uh, what I need to do to, to, to be effective. All right, so Oof. Nick, have the Rockets figured out a way to maximize Westbrook after trading for him over the summer? Rach, Russ has been much better for Houston than I thought he was going to be. He's fit, it's working. I just look at that team, and even with the small ball stuff, I go, I feel like I've seen this movie before. A great <laughs> year offensively in the regular season. They have moments where you go, yes, they can put it all together. But in the end, as I watch them, do I really believe that they can come all the way out of the West? I do not. No, I mean. But look at what, like, just about the Rockets, Westbrook. The, the Rockets have figured out, and that's why they went all in with the trade, but Westbrook has figured out how to make it work because Absolutely. he's like, look, I know what my strength is right now. It's attacking the basket. He's the best mm -hmm. in the league. He's the best guard at attacking the rim in the league. So and look at the like, way he's reduced his three-point attempts. That's yeah. really, to me, the number that sticks out, the bottom line of that table there. 
because look, we know that he is capable of change. He changed his game at times in Oklahoma City, but this was one thing yeah. that they really could not get him to stop doing is chucking up those threes when his efficiency was low. And something has clicked. I don't know if we credit Mike D'Antoni. I don't know if we credit Russ. Obviously capable of going out and doing what he wants to do in a basketball court. But taking fewer threes has meant such a shift for his it's efficiency and the team's field goal efficiency. percentage. He is dominant right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not a better player going to the rim. I mean, what, Russ, you know, you get to an age when you in the league and you try to say, all right, I'm going to figure out how to be different. I, as I get older, I'm going to find different ways to be effective. Mm -hmm. And Russ has figured it out. Listen, my shot is not up to par right now, so I'm going to take advantage of all my strengths. And that's just his athleticism and getting to the bucket, and he's the best in the league at doing that. And you have to give him all the credit to me, Rach, because he's the one that knows that those threes weren't going down early. Right. And no matter who was telling him, he's got to be the guy that makes that decision on the floor. So for him to acknowledge what wasn't working and to move forward closer to what is, that's on him. Right. And look, I do want to get back to the point you brought up earlier. The smaller ball strategy, there is a question of whether that will wear the Rockets players out. You said you've seen this movie before with the Rockets. James Harden specifically has gone so hard at times during the regular season. And look, we all appreciate that work ethic, but he has seemed worn out sometimes during the playoffs. They've decided, you know, they've talked a lot about reducing his load. Russell certainly coming in has reduced James's load. But Paul, when a team plays all small ball all the time, it does wear on you, especially defensively. The Warriors didn't go to the death lineup for the full game. They saved it more toward the end of games. What do you well, think? Well, this is what you got to understand. When they're small, mm -hmm. they're not fighting through screens, fighting off down screens. They're switching a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And so, like, for me, when I had to fight through screens, fight through down screens, that wore me down. Right. When they're small ball, they're switching everything. And they're like, shoot, we're going to be scrappy. We're going to play to our strengths. Uh, and offensively, we're going to play downhill. And so I, I don't think it'll wear them down. I think it's going to wear the other team down before over them. The course of a because over the course of a series or the course of a game, because they're speed now. They're the fat. They should be the fastest team in the league with with this lineup. The way Russ is pushing it, and now he's taking pressure off of Harden. Now when he when Harden has those playoff games where he he's not the James Harden we know, Russ can be that guy. So I, I like what they're they doing. They can switch roles. Yes, that is going to be crucial. I think we're so sensitive in the league right now to how many minutes and, and right. how hard are guys going. We're, we're not watching guys play 40 plus minutes every time on a back-to-back. -back. Plus, it, early in the year, they've been very cautious with how they use Russ. Well, sure, yeah. So they knew that they were getting him ready for two or three Look, months from now. He hasn't been playing back-to-backs. Right. Now, here's something funny, Paul. I'm with you. Gosh, they're so fast, they're so fast. When I watch them, this is a very small sample size since the mm -hmm. trade. Yes. Their pace has actually decreased since that Covington Capella trade, but I would expect later on for it to. It just seems so now. fast with Russ feels, out there. It feels <laughs> fast. Nick, thank you so much for joining Absolutely. us today. We are going to welcome Kevin Arnovitz in next. We are also going to talk about the Knicks. Are they oh, downplaying an offseason coaching change? Another trade? Knicks topic. Oh, I'm tired of this. <laughs> Paul. Every time. More Every Knicks. time. We know what's coming. Oh, <laughs> we we know what's coming. After the break. <laughs> More Knicks, oh they have the largest fan base in the NBA. Ugh. The saddest, also. <laughs> the most depressing.